Thank you, Anaga. Um, a lot of that information, I, I don't remember sharing it with anyone, so that's some really good research. Uh, all right, so let's get started. You guys have been waiting for quite a while, so I'm going to make this worth your while. So this is my talk about PrimoBots, and PrimoBots is an AR, VR company. And what to expect in this talk? How I built an AR, VR, Web3 startup, and you'll also get a free digital goodie for designers wanting to freelance. And that's it. Uh, but what you'll learn is different from what you'll get. So um, you're going to learn about AR, VR, and how that meets Web3. You're going to learn about uh, storytelling. You're going to learn about social media as a feedback channel, design thinking, brand identity, and networking serendipity. So uh, 30 minutes is a short amount of time to learn any of these in detail, but you'll get a good glimpse. And if something catches your interest, we can talk about it later, and I can provide some you know, detailed insights on these things. And uh, before anyone um, you know, wonders what this is about, I wanted to share a few juicy highlights from the first four months of uh, you know, running PrimoBots. So the visuals that you see are all a result of you know, work in the first four months on PrimoBots. And I want to start with the overview. So PrimoBots is an AR, VR, Web3 startup with immersive storytelling and community-centric experiences that educate and help Web3 audiences. And the team, uh, PrimoBots, was founded in 2021 by me and my co-founder, Ish Verdusco. And he's based out of Los Angeles. I'm based out of Bangalore. And we also hired you know, a bunch of small teams to help us with other parts of the business. And I want to share the networking serendipity part. So you come to these events to network with people. But the way that I ran into my co-founder was on Twitter. We were complete strangers on Twitter. And he put out this tweet that basically is a call for, you know, kind of like a contract, I guess. He, he had a project, and he wanted someone to work on the project with him. And you know, the way that we became from you know, strangers to founders is that we were strangers who met on Twitter. And I worked with Ish on his book project. And we collaborated on a social media project. And then we decided to run a startup together. And you'll learn more about this in the next few slides. So I like to you know, tease him that this was a meet cute. But it's not really a meet cute. It's more of a tweet cute, because it's on Twitter. And I'm sorry about the pun, but I'll make up for it. So I like to think of 2021 as you know, someone asking me about it maybe decades from now. So what was 2021 like, Grandpa? Uh, so in late 2021, as you know, Web3 folks were being shilled NFT projects by Web3 startups. And there's a lot of over-promising and under-delivering. And so during this time, there's a rise in uh, 3D NFTs, but a lot of them were just JPEGs. And the other thing was, as a 3D artist, uh, I was particularly interested in 3D NFTs. And I knew that there's a lot of potential there to cater to AR and VR developers. And the AR and VR developers in my network, they were, all, were very you know, disappointed by current NFT projects. And so the problem was that Web3 startups are selling NFTs with no utility to Web3 audiences and AR, VR developers, leaving them dissatisfied and skeptical of the Web3 space. And so there's also a personal connection that I have to this problem, which is I started my career as an Android dev. And I made a lot of AR apps, so it was sad to see Web3 folks and AR developers getting shortchanged and not getting what they deserve. So you'd think, in, in a situation like this, we're going to build an NFT project that sold 3D NFTs with good utility. But that is not the case. So that is not the solution that we went for. So our solution, in the end, was to build an AR, VR, Web3 startup that productized education and utility for Web3 audiences and developers. So the core idea being here is that build a real product and offer real services first, leveraging on blockchain and NFTs when necessary. But how did we arrive at this solution? So this is where I'd like to talk about the design thinking process for Primo Bots. And the thing with design thinking is that it's not linear, but I'm going to have to share a linear version of it for the sake of this presentation. So to start with the research phase, I had 
12 interviews with AR VR developers and active Web3 community members and even Web3 marketers. And over a period of three weeks, I learned quite a lot about what they go through, what their goals are, what impedes them. And as a team, we also took a look at other Web3 brands in the space. And you know, they were rumored to provide a lot of 3D uh, utilities. So we were trying to take a look at what are they doing and you know, what, what are the 3D utilities that they're planning for? Because not a lot of uh, you know, brands had actually provided 3D utilities. So taking into account all of this, you know, my industry experience, my co-founders, industry experience, we came up with this affinity map, and I won't go over this in too much detail, but you can take a picture, and this can be categorized into art and story, utilities, and Web3 challenges. And I'm happy to share the presentation deck later if you want to take a closer look. But to summarize these findings, three findings, art needs to be aesthetic with a good story. In-person and AR, VR utilities are in demand. Web3 is complex and scary for new and existing folks. Which brings us to the define phase. So in the define phase, you know, it's, it's pretty straightforward here. We know that we have two major user personas, one being the AR, VR developer, and the other being a Web3 marketer. And with the user journey map, you know, at every Web3 user, Almost at any point in time, they, they could be buying an NFT. They most likely are buying NFTs at that point in time. And so we were able to identify that selecting an NFT, buying an NFT, as well as engaging with the NFT seems to be, there seems to be some friction there. So the insights that we got were people disliked projects that had a lack of storytelling, and they often associated that with a lack of utility as well. So some projects were very low effort, making them, you know, it's, it's impossible to invest in such projects. And uh, people were often left shortchanged after they bought the NFT. For AR, VR developers, uh, most 3D NFTs in 2021, it's, it's almost unusable. And uh, virtual worlds were popular, but they were pretty empty. And the last insight being that people had a lot of trouble getting around so people had a lot of uh, trouble getting around technical difficulties in Web3. And there were also issues with navigating which project to invest in, a uh, desire that is met, met with a lack of trust. So that brings us to the ideation phase. So with the ideation phase, you have three key areas. You have art and story, AR, VR utilities, and you have networking opportunities. So to get started with the art and story, I wanted to start with the story first and make it centered around pop culture so that it's relatable. So what we landed on was to center the story around a sci-fi futuristic world filled with these incredible AI humanoid robots and with the story writing process. So I decided to take some inspiration from my favorite writer, uh, Christopher Nolan, and the any Christopher Nolan movie has like three essential aspects to it. And I think this is very important when you're trying to tell a story. Um, so you have the potential for nonlinear storylines and there's the, you know, every story has three acts, so plan those three acts and then add layers to your story and, you know, add uh, layers to your characters. So that brings us to the AR and VR utilities. So we had a lot of ideas, just a whole bunch of ideas, a lot of platforms that we could explore and provide different kinds of utilities. But we decided to use the four categories method to kind of figure out what we wanted to tackle first because it's a very small team. And so we decided to go with most rational, most delightful, darling, and long shot as the four categories. And among these four categories, we prioritized most rational and most delightful. <coughs> And so we decided to work on, for phase one, we decided to work on Neos, Adobe Mixamo, SnapLens, and Adobe Aero. And as for the Web3 networking and trust side of things, we decided to have meetups and workshops and conferences. Um, and this is something that we discussed at length because this has helped us you know, establish trust with our community. And coming to the prototype uh, part of this uh, project, so with the initial prototypes, it was super rough. I had a few rough sketches of these Primo bots. Uh, so I just did a lot of sketches on my iPad, uh, shared it with the team, and just you know, trying to get their thoughts. And once we, and you can see that there's a lot of inspiration from you know, popular pop culture 
uh, moments and you have these two different ideas and once we chose a direction, I made a quick 3D prototype to show it to my co-founder to get him excited about what's possible with 3D. And from there, once we landed on a base design, we also, I went ahead and uh, started to make some sketches for traits. So different sketches for the armor piece and the mouthpiece and all of those you know, individual pieces of a Primo bot. And once all of that's done, we have all the traits. That ended up with us having 5,555 Primo bots and all which have, they have a unique design. Uh, there's a, there, there, they do, there are some that share some traits, but no two Primo bots are the same. So I'd like to share a few numbers here. First, there are 5,555 Primo bots. Second, there are 60 helmets, 42 mandibles. So mandible is the mouthpiece. 100 skulls, 60 uh, pieces of body armors, and 10 body colors, seven robot companions. And you might think, why is this giving you only 5,555 Primo bots? It should give you more than that. So, you, and you're right, it actually results in 1.06 billion possibilities. So using the traits that are mentioned here, you can actually create 1.06 billion Primo bots, but we decided to choose 5,555. And so I wanted to share a little bit about the creation process as well. So here is a screenshot of Blender. So this is my, uh, this is a UI that I see when I'm designing something for Primo bots. And so you'll see the Primo bot design and the, these individual pieces in Blender that I'm working on. And the way that I uh, took the individual pieces and generated, you know, different combinations of Primo bots was using this plugin, which is available on GitHub. It's called Blend My NFTs, and it's a plugin that will allow you to generate. Uh, you know, different pe different piece art pieces with different probabilities and rarities and things like that. So, to share a little bit more about that, you have five tiers of Primo bots. So, you have the legendary, and you have ultra rare, rare, uncommon, and common. So, the you know the legendary is you know 0.09 percent of the collection. Uh, ultra rare 0.36, rare is 10 percent, and so on. And so all, they all have different backgrounds and you can kind of tell by the design that there's more, uh, this has more customization to it. So I'd like to share a few key examples. And I do want to mention, so this is the first example, the caped crusader. Uh, if DC calls, this is not Batman. If someone here is working in DC, this is not Batman. And second example is the God of Mischief. And I checked, uh, Disney cannot trademark a Norse god. They can only trademark their interpretation of it. So Tom, I guess Hiddleston, they can only trademark that look, but they cannot trademark this. Um, and then the third example and the last one is the Primo Rock. Um, Primo Rock inspired by Dwayne Johnson. Uh, and so this Primo Award stars in 40 action movies a year, 10 of which are based out of a jungle. And with the art and story, the full phase one story is on Primo Boards, but here's a sneak peek. And so the story kind of follows the three uh, storytelling principles that I was talking about earlier. And so the reason that we worked so much on the story was because there's a potential for, we wanted to create a potential for a TV show, a movie or a video game. So this project doesn't really solve like world hunger or something like that, but uh, it is something that is that plays into the world of entertainment and education. And so, with the website, I had a low fidelity version and I wanted to make sure that before we get this out in, in the public, we are, you know, we're getting user feedback via Maze with, you know, AR, VR developers, as well as Web3 audiences. And once we have the low fidelity, I started to work on the brand identity. So with the brand identity, it was very important to create a scalable logo. And so a logo that works great in dark mode as well as light mode and you have these four different logo configurations. Um, and as you can see, the logo, the main icon is based on the base design of a Primo Bot helmet. Uh, I thought it would be something that people could easily associate with a Primo Bot. And this is the simple logo construction. So you have the primary version, which is this horizontal logo configuration, and you have a vertical uh, configuration, which is, you know, and this all spaced out using a formula. 
And we also wanted to figure out our brand strategy, which is something that we did way back. Um, and we have a brand mission, we have a very clear brand voice and tone, we have brand values. So brand values being you know, diversity, inclusion and belonging, uh, me being Indian, my co-founder being Mexican, um, and you know, with innovation as well, zig while everyone zags, uh, ikigai, uh, that's a Japanese um, principle which is to say strive for continuous improvement. And this is our color palette, so we wanted to choose something that's uh, sci-fi, futuristic, something that uh, gives off a lot of energy, so you have these primary colors, space purple, luminous white, and I'm very intentional about how I name my colors, so space purple can be associated with something like Primo Wars because it's a futuristic world, and then you have luminous white and you have lucent yellow, blaze red, to suggest the level of energy that I want these color palettes, uh, I want these colors to give off, so um, you have alloy gray and twilight black as well. And this is the typography, so with the typography as well, um, wanted to make sure something that, that feels like a you know, futuristic robot brand. Uh, so you have made Outer Sands bold as the title text, sort of for the body, uh, and then made Outer Sands uh, for buttons and labels again. And the thing about the brand identity design process is that it's so important as designers to share your work on social media and um, the date on this tweet is Feb 28th, 2022, back when Twitter's algorithm was good. Um, so uh, you know, the, the reach was good for this tweet, so I was able to get a lot of feedback uh, for this particular tweet and uh, you, you'll see a lot of good positive feedback, but also feedback where people are DMing me and asking me questions and it got me thinking and got me changing parts of the brand. But I created a thread here which details every single part of Primovort's brand identity and why I chose the things that I chose. And so with the website being high fidelity, again, got some good user feedback. You know, we can only get to the high fidelity when you have a strong brand identity. So with the brand identity, we were able to work on the high fidelity version of the website. And coming to AR and VR utilities, so this is the first AR VR utility that I'd like to speak about. Um, so, you know, you can basically replace your head with a Primo Bots helmet. Um, and we, and it's not just this helmet thing that I'm talking about, the, the 3D file itself, we made that available to AR and VR developers that they could use. And I also made sure that I made it accessible to people, you know, by recording the creation process. And there's a tutorial on this on YouTube. Um, and also the next AR VR utility had to do with the metaverse or your virtual world. So you can take your Primo bots and bring them into the virtual world. So basically, again, th there was a, I made a tutorial on how to create your, your personal avatar in the metaverse. And so you can walk around uh, as a Primo bot, like here's a Primo bot on a beach, and you can have these conferences, you can meet people, you can meet people, someone who's living far away, uh, in this virtual world as your Primo Bot avatar. Uh, and again, I think it goes without saying, this is very super highly ap applicable for games as well. And here's another Primo Bot in, at a Japanese temple. Um, so the thing that I'd like to add here is that this works with a VR headset as well. So you can just put on a VR headset and experience all of this, but you don't, you, don't, you know, uh, the VR headset is optional. So you can just walk around as a Primo Bot just, just on your laptop. And here's a Primo bot exploring an anime city. Um, so here is another utility that I'd like to share, which is the Adobe Mixamo utility. So you can bring your full body avatar into Adobe Mixamo and you can animate it. So you can make it dance, you can make it fight, um, or you can just make it stand still, uh, like I am right now. Uh, so the next utility is with Adobe Aero. Uh, Adobe Aero lets you take AR photography, so you can bring your Primo bots into, you know, into, into the real world, basically, and take photos with it. And so these are all uh, smaller examples that are more helpful to AR and VR developers, but this is just a glimpse at what you can do with AR and VR if you have a good uh, you know, 3D assets. And when it comes to the networking side of things, and this is, this is super important to us, um, You'll see a lot of happy faces here because we had a lot of uh, conferences and meetups, and uh, you'll see people, you know, uh, at these events. And we had events in Los Angeles, uh, Colombia, and it was a lot of fun to host these events. And 
the purpose of these events was to you know, educate people about how to use blockchain technology, some good security practices, and uh, basically also teach them about how to get onboarded onto Web3. And the last phase, and again, as I said, this is not a linear process, uh, I'd like to talk about the test phase. So feedback was not a linear process. And I took feedback from users, audiences, and team members at every step necessary. Social media obviously helped a lot with getting feedback. And the feedback in general was quite positive. And I think there were some tweets that really, as I said, uh, got me thinking about the direction of the company and what we should do. A lot of the tweets on Twitter helped us decide what we should tackle next in terms of like popularity of the tools and things like that. And some of the key highlights from the business impact, um, we had a lot of exciting blockchain gaming partnerships as a result of uh, PrimoBots. And uh, we, ra we you know, ran into a lot of, we were able to help uh, AR developers build new experiences using PrimoBots and not just the PrimoBots assets themselves, but using, like, you know, we were able to lend our expertise to them. And also brand promotion at events, we were able to work with a lot of brands in this space, um, you know, kind of reach more people, build more trust, and things like that. And uh, there were a few, you know, metrics that I measured just sort of curiosity. And, you know, 43% of first time event attendees, uh, they got a premium award either during or after the event. And when we launched our full body avatars, we had a 325% increase in our customer base, like just more people using it. Just because full body avatars are quite popular, and um, we had more than 20 collaboration opportunities with uh, other Web3 startups in uh, gaming and tech, so that was a lot of fun. And just to conclude this, um, I'm pretty much done with my pr presentation here, but I'd like to give a shout out to one of my designers. Uh, his name is Mid Journey, he couldn't be here. And uh, that's, th that's about it. Uh, so thank you. Uh, this is your coupon code. Uh, for, you know, you can go to my website and you'll find the book. And on Gumroad, you can use this coupon to get 100% off on the brand identity design book. And if you have any questions, any projects you'd like to discuss, any emotional outbursts, I'm going to be around. <laughs>